Welcome back to Harbour and Box for another big benchmark video. And I am sick for this one, if you can't tell already. So yeah, if I sound a bit off, that is the reason why. Anyway, not a big deal. The show will continue, and it has to because it's now time to compare the overclocked Ryzen 5 1600 to the Core i5 8409 games at a range of resolutions. Now, if you missed yesterday's video, it's probably worth watching that first, as it does talk about a lot of things relating to this video. Uh, basically, I touched on a few things like why I do test at a range of resolutions, uh, why the Vega 64 liquid cooled graphics card is used, and I addressed a number of misconceptions about the Core i5 8400. Skipping all of that information for this video, we're just going to get right into the benchmarks. Please note, in addition to the Radeon RX Vega 64 liquid cool graphics card, both the AMD and Intel systems were also tested with the same DDR4 3200CL14 memory. The Core i5-8400 is a lock CPU, so that obviously hasn't been overclocked in any way. Uh, meanwhile, the Ryzen 5 6800 has been overclocked to 4GHz, while I've included the stock R5-6800X results for reference. Reference. Additionally, the Core i7 7700K has also been included, though note it hasn't been overclocked. The focus of this video will be the overclocked Ryzen 5 6800 at 4GHz, which will obviously be compared to the Core i5-8400. Uh, I guess the question is, can the Ryzen CPU deliver comparable gaming performance when overclocked, and how does it stack up in terms of value? Well, we're about to find out. Let's jump into the benchmarks. First up we have the Battlefield 1 results and here we find some pretty disappointing numbers right off the bat for Ryzen. That said I wasn't expecting the overclock 1600 to be significantly faster than the 1600X which already operates quite close to 4 GHz for the most part. Here at 720p overclocking the cheaper R5 1600 boosted the frame rates by just 5%. And this meant even overclocked Ryzen was much slower than the 8th gen Core i5. In fact, the Core i5-8400 is 40 FPS faster for the minimum frame rate, and that's almost a 30% increase. Essentially, you're getting 7700K light performance, slightly better in fact, but at a much lower price, looking at the MSRP anyway. As dire as the low resolution testing looks, as the GPU bottleneck starts to creep in at 1080p using the ultra quality settings, the Ryzen 5 1600 mounts a swift comeback and is now within a 5% margin. There are of course two sides to these results, some will say that they're realistic as they show gamers how much difference there will be under realistic conditions uh, that they intend to play with. The other side being that it's hiding how much faster the Intel CPUs are and in future with faster GPUs the margin will again open up. Uh, I'm simply going to note both sides of the argument and leave it up to you, the viewer, to decide which results should influence your buying decision. Then finally, at 1440p, we are even more GPU limited, and here the CPU's impact is reduced further. Needless to say, all CPUs offered a smooth experience in Battlefield 1. Next up, we have another DirectX 12 title, Civilization 6. For testing, I use the GPU benchmark and measure performance with Presentmon. The test runs for 30 seconds and it takes the same amount of time on a Pentium G4560 as it does an 8700K, for example. As far as I can tell, it is a very accurate test and this is based on results it's given me over time. Here we see something very different to the results just shown when looking at Battlefield 1. I'm not sure what it is about Civilization 6, but the game runs significantly better on AMD Ryzen CPUs when using a Radeon graphics card in the DirectX 12 mode. Mode. It's really hard to say if this is an indication of how future native DirectX tiles will perform on Ryzen in relation to Intel, or if this is just some strange anomaly. Again, the test method here doesn't favour slower processes, as some believed based on information given by Gamers Nexus for this test. We're not using the term-based AI benchmark. I'm not really interested in how long it takes the CPU to calculate the AI's move. I realise this turn-based game doesn't really require a high frame rate, but the frame rate is still more what I'm interested in as it could point to how future DirectX 12 titles will perform. Anyway, similar margins are again seen at 1080p as this is a heavily CPU bound game, so we aren't seeing much of a reduction in frame rate. This is again true even at 1440p, and here the Ryzen 5 1600 is a massive 47% faster than the Core i5 8400 when comparing the minimum frame rate result. Honestly, I'm not sure how this is possible for Ryzen to be so much faster in this game, but it's not because it's rendering a static scene for a longer period of time. 
Dawn of War 3 is a DirectX 11 title, and here we see that when overclocked, the Ryzen 5 6200 processor is able to match the Core i5 8400 at 720p. The average frame rate was only boosted by 6% over the 1600X, but that was enough to match the Core i5 processor. That said, the 7700K still remains out in front here. Performance goes virtually unchanged at 1080p, so we're obviously CPU bound here and not limited by the Vega 64 graphics card. Much the same is also found at 1440p as well, though the overclocked Ryzen 5 1600 just edges out the Core i5-8400. F1 2017 utilizes the CPU about as well as any DirectX 11 title does, and once overclocked, we see fairly competitive numbers from the Ryzen 5 1600. It was 10% slower than the Core i5 8400 for the minimum result, but just 6% slower for the average, so not a huge margin. That said, the margins do remain much the same even at 1080p as the overclocked Ryzen CPU continues to trail the new Core i5. Then at 1440p, the R5 1600 delivers 7700K light performance and is now just 7% slower than the 8400. Overwatch was tested using the ultra quality preset, so it's fair to say any of these CPUs will be sufficient even for the most demanding players. That said, the overclock Ryzen 5 1600 was still 15% slower than the 8400 in this tile, and that meant that frame rates did dip 25 FPS lower. Not ideal for those chasing extreme frame rates in this title. Still, with an average of over 200 FPS, the R5 1600 obviously provided a very smooth experience. Then at 1080p, we ran into a severe GPU bottleneck as Vega 64 limits us to an average of around 165 FPS. Of course, the same is also seen at 1440p, and here the CPU isn't afforded the opportunity to make a difference. Project Cars 2 is another new racing simulator, and this one is also quite CPU demanding. Overclocking Ryzen only boosted the average frame rate by 6%, and this meant the R5 1600 was still 15% slower than the Core i5 8400 at 720p. Moving to 1080p reduces this margin just 9%. Here the R5 1600 was good for 115 FPS on average, while the 8400 managed 127 FPS. Then finally, at 1440p, we ended up with the same 100 FPS average and 84 FPS minimum for the R5 1600 and 8400. Next up we have PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and these results are more competitive than what I was expecting, though that's mostly because CPUs with more than 4 cores seem to confuse this title. While the 7700K looks very mighty, the 8400 is quite a bit slower, and in fact only matches the performance of the overclocked Ryzen 5 1600. That said, once we jump to 1080p, we're now GPU limited, and the overclocked R5 1600 delivered the same experience as the 7700K and 8400. This is of course also seen at 14 40p and here the stock 1600x also catches up so not much else to report here really so let's move on to rainbow six siege tom clancy's rainbow six siege is another cpu demanding title and at 720p the 8th gen core series pushes over 180 fps at all times this is another older DirectX 11 title that just doesn't play that well with Ryzen. Here the overclocked r5 1600 was 21% slower than the 8400 and that's obviously a huge margin the massive deficit can also be seen even at 1080p, as the overclocked R5 1600 was still 20% slower than the Core i5 8400 when comparing the minimum result. As you would expect, the margins did close up at 1440p, but even so, the R5 1600 is still 11% slower than the 8400 for the minimum result. Total War Warhammer offers both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 support, but I've tested using DX12. That said, even with the more modern API, the game doesn't utilize a CPU that well and doesn't really call for more than a quad core. In fact, like what we saw with PUBG, it seems that gamers are better off with the 7700K quad core for these titles. Testing at 720p showed the 7700K to be 13% faster than the 8400 for the average frame rate and 27% faster than the overclocked R5 1600. However, once we make the jump to 1080p, frame rates tumble and now the CPUs deliver the same average and minimum result. As you would expect, this is also true at 1440p, as we are heavily GPU bound here. Alright, so we've checked out the 9 games I benchmark with, it's time to break down the data and work out what's what. First up, everyone's favourite, the 720p data, and here we can see, on average, the Core i5-8400 was 11% faster than the overclocked Ryzen 5 6200 when comparing the minimum frame rate. Not a massive margin, but the 8400 is clearly faster overall. It's worth noting it also matched the minimum result of the 7700K. So now if we check out the cost per frame, this is what we find. Please note I'm combining both the CPU and motherboard cost here. So the 8400 is paired with a cheap Z370 board and the R5 1600 with a B350 board. 
Here we see, based on the 720p data, that the Core i5-8400 combo, despite costing 9% more, actually ends up costing 2% less per frame, thanks to that superior performance overall. Obviously not a lot in it, so it's fair to say the 8400 and R5-1600 are very similar in terms of value, assuming you're willing to overclock the Ryzen CPU. Moving to 1080p, we see whereas the 8400 was 11% faster previously, it's now just 4% faster at 1080p. This means when comparing cost per frame, the 8400 now costs 5% more, making the overclocked Ryzen 5 1600 slightly better value. Then at 1440p, where we are heavily GPU bound, there is zero performance difference between the R5 1600 and 8400. This means when comparing the cost per frame, the 8400 is now 9% more expensive as the combo costs 9% more, so no surprises there. Okay, so based on that data, worst case for the Core i5-8400 being that it costs 9% more and delivers the same performance. Uh, that figure is just accounting, of course, for the CPU and motherboard. Remember, the Intel combo is just $25 US more. So for those building a full system, uh, you can probably safely add on another $1,000 US to the total. And now the 8400 costs slightly less than 2% more. What I'm getting at here is regardless of how you look at it, they're very similar. If we focus on non-GPU bound results, which I feel we really ought to, the 8400 is the better value option as the performance increase outweighs the slight cost increase. At 1080p, they're much of a muchness and naturally at 1440p where we're very GPU bound, the cheapest combo delivers the most value. The Core i3-8100, for example, or the Ryzen 3 1300X would win here if we included them. So I'll let you decide how much weight those 1440p results should carry. Now, I realize it is extremely difficult to buy the Core i5-8400 right now, and getting one for $190 is even harder. However, this doesn't invalidate the results or my opinion. The MSRP is $182 US, and it won't be long before you can readily purchase the 8400 at around that price. If this upsets you so much that you just can't get over it, Think of it this way, you're getting a preview of what's to come. Shortly, Intel will release the Core i5-8400, and this is how it will perform. Nothing about the performance data I've shown here will change, and the 8400 will become available at around $180 US. Now, armed with that information, you have a choice. Take the red pill, or patiently wait for your local pharmacy to restock the blue pill. That is to say, buy the Ryzen 5 1600 now, or wait and get the Core i5-8400 once supply meets demand. I know there's going to be AMD fanboys screaming that I'm biased because I included low resolution testing or I didn't base my pricing analysis on a limited time only sale price at Micro Center. Then on the other side of the fence, Intel fans will be up in arms that I didn't use a GTX 1080 Ti for the testing or that 1440p limits CPU performance and therefore AMD paid me. Truth is, I really just don't care either way. Buy the Ryzen 5, buy the Core i5, it's really all the same to me. I'm just trying to provide the best information I can on the subject for potential buyers. Uh, just for fun though, something a bit different, let's make a case for buying the Ryzen 5 1600 and then for the Core i5 8400. I'd buy the Ryzen 5 1600 because it's cheaper. Hey, $25 buys you a decent cooler or some flashy RGB lights. It's also available right now at the MSRP or a little less when on sale, and it's supported by a massive range of affordable B350 motherboards. If you're using anything less than a GTX 1080 Ti or you play at realistic resolutions, the experience is going to be similar or identical to that of the more expensive Intel CPUs. The included cooler is good enough to support a 4GHz overclock with a custom fan curve and most chips will hit at least 3.9GHz with the right voltage settings. A Ryzen's efficiency is also very good, the R5-1600 is very power efficient for a 6-core 12-thread CPU. Speaking of which, it does support 12 threads and that could come in very handy in the future. Gaming aside, the R5-1600, even before it's overclocked, is the superior productivity CPU, vastly superior in some tests. Okay, so they're my arguments for buying Ryzen. I'd buy the Core i5-8400 because it's the stronger gaming CPU for the vast majority of titles available right now. A stronger low resolution performance could point to it being a better CPU down the track and a better pairing for future generation GPUs. Those rocking a high refresh rate gaming monitor right now will surely be better served by the 8400. It's also a beast out of the box. There's no need to fine tune or overclock. I mean, you can't, but you're getting superior performance in games anyway. 
Although Z370 motherboards are the only option right now, that combo is only slightly more expensive and it provides a flexible upgrade path in the future. So it might not even be worth saving the $30 to $50 on a B360 board for a lot of gamers. In the end, the 8400 is a simple yet powerful option for gamers. Okay, so that's me looking at this as objectively as I can. Uh, you can certainly make a strong case for buying either the Ryzen 5 1600 or the Core i5 8400. Uh, the only hiccup being that while you can purchase the Ryzen CPU right now, uh, you can't the 8400. This could all change in the coming weeks, so let's just not complicate the issue with that availability mess. Uh, you'll have to cross that bridge when it comes time to upgrade or build your new gaming PC. You have the performance data and you've seen how that translates when measuring the cost per frame based on the US MSRP. If pricing is different in your region, take the average data and recalculate that. It's based on your pricing. It's really that simple. Uh, I'm not sure there's much more that needs to be said or can be said for now on the subject, so let's leave it at that. I'll continue to compare these two CPUs and new games as they arrive and monitor how things evolve. I realize there's a few new games right now that do need to be tested and you can bet I am testing them as we speak, kind of. Uh, for now though, I'm your host Steve. Apologies for my voice again. I know it's a bit uh, painful for this one, but there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I'll catch you on another video real soon. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and share.